What's up, everybody? Back to another Matt Chat Live. Look what I got. This He's got his stuff curled today. I used to do that, but I don't have it anymore. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Daniel Ford is with us today. Doctor, thank you so much for being here on the show with us today here at Matt Chat Live. Matt, thank you so much for having me on. I'm uh, really kind of excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the mustache. Uh, I watched Tombstone one too many times Dude, that uh, is over Thanksgiving. Tombstone. <laughs> yes, I just, if you had the hat, I totally would be there. With your yeah, little sort of hats yeah. going on down there too. Yeah, I was trying to get the Doc Holiday look, a little love something it. different. So that's cool. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a it's a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be to to grow something like this and to maintain it. You know, it was much easier either shave it all off or the light beard or goatee. Much easier to upkeep. Yes, when I had my really long beard, my big old mustache right over here. Yeah, yeah. Just, just cut it off not too long ago, but I would always do my curl. But the hard thing about that, people don't think about, it's hard to keep it curled. And there's you got to find the right product. And I went through, I don't know how many mustache waxes I went through. And I'm like, this doesn't even, it's not wax. It's like chapstick. It doesn't even work. I'm thinking, what is this? You know, actually, this is kind of gross. I had some guy tell me, I've tried everything. I even use my own earwax. I said, you use your earwax. First of all, how do you have that much earwax? Second of all, that's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, no, <laughs> I just get it. Then, you know, uh, you're right about the products. I think I've gone through maybe four or five and I found two that work pretty well. And I don't even remember what their what their names are. I just, you know, I always look at the package. I'm like, OK, I need to order again. Yeah, um, was it, it holds up. It doesn't fall off and get all droopy and stuff after a while. Yeah. You know, uh, about. Well, I mean, it can go most of the day. Um, during the day, wow. but then it's just about like, okay, all right, how much am I eating? How much yeah. am I, you know, because the I found you know, once it, you know, it gets wet, then it goes away. Like oh, the right. wax does not hold up. No, it's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to carry it around with me when I was doing that because I'd have to. If you go to eat or wet, wet ground, it's like, bloop. and there's a lot of times I'm on shows and it's like, oh, crooked. Yeah. <laughs> I look horrible right now. I have no idea what people are going to think. Yeah. Oh, crazy. absolutely. <laughs> well, anyway, for those of us that are listening, for all you ladies out there, if you want to know how to curl your mustache, there you go. So <laughs> that's works really well. So, so, Doc, why don't you just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing and, and uh, what's what's exciting in your life today? Oh, wow. So, you know, where, where to start? So, you know, I, I would say, you know, for all of those out, out there that uh, feel like they have to go a traditional route to whatever they whatever they define as success, um, I, I would like to believe that I did not do anything traditional out there at all. Um, and, and there's more, there's, you know, there, there's always more than one way to, to get to whatever you want to define as success. And, and, and I would go maybe so much to say that you should not be in the pursuit of happiness. Happiness will be a result of you doing things that are valuable for your time. And I think that you will result in, in being happy or you'll result in having whatever type of financial independence you, you want if you're seeking out you know things that are are valuable to you um yeah. you know you, you'll hear a lot of things out there like elon musk saying you know he feels like college is a waste of time it's more like a you know you doing chores and, and i think that's wrong I, I think there's multiple ways in which you can go about being successful and there's we're all different and some capacity we're all different even though i feel like you know we all have this this equal opportunity to be good um good people and to do good deeds but the path there's it can be different you know so i didn't i didn't go to college right after high school i you know, I, tr I take it back i tried to go to college right after high school <laughs> i was not good at it and i and i essentially dropped out because i i was doing things that went against um, my, my own nature. And I didn't even know it at the time. Like, it just wasn't me. You know, uh, while I'm a technologist and I love technology, you know, I love, I love helping people grow uh, into whatever their potential is much more than I'd like, you know, doing the actual technology itself these days. So I worked for a couple of different companies, uh, XM radio back in, you know, 2000 to 2003, 9-11 happened, went to go work uh, in government at that time, worked for a company called Unisys, um, where we had the ITMS contract, which was what stood up Homeland Security. So I became the director of network security there. And then I decided to go and get my degree. So I was about 
maybe 26, 27 years old when I finally decided to go get a degree. Uh, then I liked it. Um, you know, I, I like that, that, that the framework for education, I think it's a big, big part that people miss, uh, and that, yeah, you can learn almost anything out there for free today, but do we have the capability or even discipline in ourselves to, to, uh, to provide that internal structure on ourselves to go through a, a course right. of, of that that framework that the education is about have. discipline for sure. I mean, yeah, college because you had a completely different discipline you do in high school, and mom and dad aren't breathing down your neck technically every day, right? And uh, you've got a professor that says you got something to do, but they're not going to sit there and hold your hand through the whole thing either, and you have to get it thing knocked out. So I think it's great. It's a great opportunity to learn different things in life that you're going to need in the future. Now, people don't know yet what your degree. Uh, choice was and uh it definitely was not like he's not he didn't go to become like a veterinarian or um maybe a broadcast journalist or maybe like a rocket scientist but what did you choose yeah so you know since i was already working in technology i i took the easy route now and i and i sometimes wish that i that i hadn't but i had such a passion for technology at that point so i did my undergrad in computer science uh, kind of like that. Went into George Washington University later to get a master's in computer forensics. Uh, then I went and did a master's in information assurance management, which is what we call cybersecurity today. And then I did a doctorate in cybersecurity. Uh, and then I, I I might be done. I don't think it, I am just yet. Uh, and last May, I completed my MBA from the University of Michigan. So when I say I, you know, I didn't stop, I, I really didn't stop, you know. I'm so this a, guy's got more degrees than a thermometer. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> hey, hey, and now I could have, like I said, I mean, I could have learned all these things on my own. There's, there's no question in my mind, but I wouldn't have gotten the relationships along the way and in meeting interesting people that helped change who I am but if I'd mean, done it on my own. Right. So. And you know, influence around something that you're passionate about specifically, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The MBA was probably, I feel like, much more difficult because it was not in my chosen discipline. And, and I met some amazing people there. So of the work that you've done thus far, what is your favorite? Yeah, I would say uh, what I'm currently working on. Um, so... I am the chief information officer at uh, Jovia Financial Credit Union out in uh, Long Island, New York. They are an amazing group of people. Um, you know, not a lot of people know about credit unions, or at least they 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 may have heard of it. Like they may have heard of like Navy Federal Credit Union or something along those lines, but don't understand that a lot of credit unions are are small, and they truly are interested in helping the underserved communities. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's a much different, like they're, they're a nonprofit, but that doesn't mean they're, they're a charity. Like they, they still got to make money, but the money that they're making, they're looking for it to go back into the members that are, are there. And they do that by, you know, better rates on, on mortgages, better rates on car loans, better rates in CDs and, and things of things like that. They want to see everyone get better. Whereas so is that for real, Dan, or is that more of a commercial? No, um, I mean, there may be some that are not like that, but you know, you have to take a look at the charter of the credit union, I think. Um, and I didn't know this until I started working for a credit union because I worked for a lot of startups, I worked for government, um, I worked for um, a, a bank prior to the credit union, and what, what I see is uh, at least where I'm at today, uh, if your charter is local, um, which means you know, you're based on a, a certain geographical location, they're really investing back into that community. Um, they, they know more about the community. So for us, we're just in two counties in New York. That's all we're allowed. It's a federal, federal um, community-based charter. So we can't go outside. Of that it means you got to work there. You got to live there. You have to go to school there. Um, if in you in order in, in those two counties, and we're doing nothing but investing back into those. Uh, and you'll see a lot of credit unions like that. I think once you if you start getting to those 
uh, Navy Federal Credit Unions, those Pentagon Federal Credit Unions, maybe, and I could be completely wrong, but they've got a national charter. How can they really be invested in communities when they're everywhere? I think at that point, they're, they're just too big. But mm. I could be completely wrong. You know, I am I am absolutely biased. I mean, I, I love who I work for, and I think they do. A, I mean, we since I'm in those boardrooms, I'm in those board talks, it is all the time, what are we doing with the community? Who's going to get our scholarship this year? Um, wow. You know, all and they're, they're really, where are we going to put a next branch? You know, what is the, you know, the market segment that we're looking to attract? And, and we're not looking for, not that we're going to turn away someone that's got a high net worth, but we're looking for the people that are on their way up. They're currently struggling a little bit. I mean, we do things like, okay, maybe you got turned down from some banks but you went through a bad time. We do look for those second chance people. I mean, that's, that's what we feel like we, we want to, to do. And, and I really, I didn't think I would be someone that would like the credit union, but it really kind of appealed to who I am. It's about people helping people and giving back and helping people be better tomorrow than they were yesterday. And it's not just, yeah, we want to make money. That's the thing. We have to make money. Like we're none of us are keeping jobs if yeah. we're not, like, not making money, right? So we still want to do that. We're just looking to do it to where if we're making money, we're helping other people make money at the same time. And yeah. you know, it's not equal outcome, right? You know, we you know, there's always going to be bigger fish out there, but you know, I, I enjoy it. It's so that's that's pretty awesome, by the way, because I love community. I'm a big passionate guy for local. I've owned local businesses and you know, I, I, I'm, I've got one video that I did with a commercial with my kids and my kids, when they were smaller, they're in the backseat of my vehicle. I said, death to corporate, shop local, death to corporate, shop local. I was all big shop local guy, right? I still am. Yeah. I still think it's there's great power in shopping local. Um, but, you know, what What do you have that you've done in your, in your career thus far, as far as educational career? Because it's definitely a career that you've been having as far as education. All at the what same you, time. All applying. at the same time. <laughs> yeah, all at the same time. What are you applying from that into whatever you're doing at the credit union? Well, you know, I oh, everything really. I mean, when you when you think about it, um, but I'm mostly applying at today. Like, so an MBA is not just you know accounting and finance that you're learning. Uh, they. They've at least, I mean, some of them are. It really depends on the school you want to go to. But what I learned at Michigan Ross was how to fill in the gaps for what I felt leadership was. Um, they they have a very uh, amazing uh, institute there for um, you know, what I think they, they call it the uh, Executive Education Center. And they've done so much research on leadership. And uh, uh, especially on how positive leadership can really change an organization, you know, almost overnight. You know, the, big, the bigger the organization, you know, the longer it takes. But for that size, you know, to them, it might feel like it's still overnight. It's all, it's all based on perception. And, and some of those is just how we tackle the problem. And you'll have those 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 you know managers and we'll just say that because I feel like even if you are um, the most ineffective manager out there, you still had to have some type of leadership because otherwise you wouldn't have got to to management. Um, so you you learn how to reach people in a different way. And first off, like yeah, you know, and, and this was this was very interesting, like the science behind this, and I'm. I am by no stretch of the imagination, this kind of a scientist, you know, I know how to research and I, and I know how to uh, read the literature and figure out what things are valuable and what aren't. But what was interesting in this case is that we are trained on negative conditions because as we were evolving as a species, if we ignored something that was bad, like don't do that, then we might die. If we ignore, <laughs> if we ignore something good, the worst case scenario is regret. Oh, well, I should have done that. But I can't ignore that negative thing. And now that we become adults and you know and we're now in the workplace, we've con we've been conditioned on don't touch that that's going to hurt. That's going to be fired. Don't go play this. Don't 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 no matter what you do, it's a don't. And we got conditioned. So the, the, the example that was given, which I I am absolutely guilty of that. Your child comes home from school, they've got, you know, three A's, three B's, 
and a D, where do you go? Well, I know I do. I go right to the D. Like, what's going on? What you know? Forget that they've got they still have more than a three point oh GPA. I mean, they're they're doing really well. They got three A's, three B's, and a D. You know, yeah. But we focus on that D. And so the um, person that was giving this, he was the uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was the former CEO for uh, Prudential Real Estate Division. Um, which in and itself was a very, very large company. It would have been a Fortune 500 CEO. Yeah, I, on I, own. Remember, I read an article about this guy not too long ago because you're thinking, Who, why don't we read an article about some insurance guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, right. But he's way more than that. So, gosh, it was. I, I think it was something as simple as like Bob Smith or something. I can't, I can't remember. It sounded so simple, but I know you're talking about. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So this was actually his story, like with his daughter. And so he went in and like his, his, he was saying how his wife was so upset. You need to go talk to your daughter. So he goes in and he, he, he talks though. Cause he'd already taken all these positive leadership classes at, at Michigan Ross. That's where he went. And he sent his entire executive team there from what I, for at least how the story goes from what he said and what I, what I remember, but he talked to her and he was like, so tell me about your English class where she's getting an A. Oh, I, I love English. Tell me about your teacher. Do you like, love my teacher. Do you do your homework? Yeah, easy. You know, do you, you know, do you ask questions in class? Yeah, all the time. Same thing with her social studies, same thing with her science. And then she gets to the math, which is where she, I think she got the D in. Do you like your math teacher? No, I don't really like the teacher. Do you do your homework? Not really. I don't quite understand it. Uh, do you ask questions in class? No, I don't want to feel stupid. Well, you know, insert child's name, you know how to be an A student. You've got A's. You know what you need to do. Uh, so how do you flip that? And we all have that in us to where we can we can choose to dwell on the negative or we can double and triple down on our positives. And so all he asked her to do was, I want you to you know make a deal and we'll get you a tutor. But I want you to ask, no matter what, two questions every day in class. And... Uh, no matter what those are, ask two questions every math class. And she did that, and eventually she got her grade up to a B or something along those lines. And, and did that by by just going, you know how to do it. Ask your questions. Be inquisitive. Uh, so I try to put that on all of my people. Ask questions. Your voice, I want to know what you are thinking because as a leader, I have blind spots. I know I have blind spots. And I'm hiring people around me on purpose that they are different because they're going to think about these problems differently. And they may have a question that I have not even thought of asking yet. And I need to know. Now, yeah. the hard part in that is sometimes I'll ask that question and you'll quickly go through the process and go, okay, um, got it solved. And then the solution gets out there and they'll go, well, hey, why'd you ask my opinion if you didn't you know, take it? But what they don't get is that it's this big, huge, grand picture, and their point is like right here. So it's hard for them as a more junior employee to see exactly where their piece is. So you know, I've learned how to take that from the big picture, get the questions, get it down the small, show my people how they did influence and that helping them grow. And, and could I have come up with all these things on my own? Sure. Absolutely. But I got access to a research institute, which you know now really helps my scientific mind and, and my training because I've got research that's peer-reviewed that is real case studies, not necessarily just marketing. Like they are, they're writing books. You know, Kim Cameron has written so many books on on leadership who's a part of the, uh, the uh, university's program there. And so I got to learn from some of the, some of the best. And you know what? Not one of them had an ego about them. Mm. Ask the, and that was... You know, that was really different for me when I, um, but the, you know, because most of the time, like the people I was around that it were that well known, they make sure you know that they were well known and they make sure you feel that you were less. Not one person at that university ever made me feel like I was less. And, and, and while I, I feel like I was, I mean, I, I definitely 100% suffer from imposter syndrome. Here I am as a, you know, I'm a computer geek going to the a top five business school. What did I, I didn't belong there. At least I didn't feel like I belong there. They definitely made me feel like welcome. And, and I, I feel like I did pretty well. I mean, you know, I got the degree, but 
I, I just enjoyed the people and I learned so much from so many different people there that uh, I would never have, I could have gotten the education. I would never have met those kind of people. So that um, comes right back to what you said on the front side when we, when we started the show off, which was um, relationship. And this aspect, the story you just told about the girl, the whole thing, it, it, it came down to relationship. Like the girl that had that liked the teacher, she talked to the teacher, mm -hmm. she asked questions, and they she did got A's. Don't like the teacher, don't ask the questions, you don't do well in class, right? So because you had some relationships with people that were approachable, you know, that's a, a main factor in leadership is that you should be approachable. Not about having an open door policy. I mean, if you're a jerk with an open door policy, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> Right? You can come to my door anytime. I don't want to come through your door. You're a jerk. You know, but if they have, if your person is approachable and a person who is 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 humble, right? Doesn't mean you're you're uh, you're weak guys out there. And I don't want to be humble. No, you can be humble and still be strong, right? As a matter of fact, I think Absolutely. it takes more strength to be humble than it does to be to be uh, the other way around, right? To be a jerk. So, you know, when you do those things, it it attracts people. You become attractive, right? Not like I think your mustache is really sexy. Right? <laughs> but, but it is. But it is. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm looking at your profile picture, and it's, it's backwards from where you're at right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's completely hair different. Picture, hair on top of the head, none on top of your head. So it's yeah. like complete opposite. Uh, so, uh, pre pre and post COVID, you know, pre pre COVID, uh, I had the I, I had the time and the luxury to go get a haircut, whatever I wanted, and now I'm kind of you know. Yeah, I guess back, back you know, this time last year, it's kind of like, you know, I, I don't think I want to take a chance to go get my hair cut. So the best way to deal with it was two ways. Like, and I've seen some people go like the, the caveman route and they just let everything grow or they kind of did what I did, which is what, hey, it cost me, I don't know, 30 bucks for a pair of wall clippers, shaved it all off. And then, you know, then I got the razor to, to just to maintain it. it off. Yeah, you have to have the right shape head to pull it off, buddy. I'm telling you what, I, you have to have nice, nice round head. I've got an egg head. Can't I can't pull off. I mean, <laughs> I, don't I've already, know, I don't know if I pull it off or not. Head. Yeah, mine's going without whether I care about it or not, I guess. But I think this is about as far as it's going to go. So I still got some hair. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, I digress. That comes back to relationships, right? It comes back to being able to have these connections with people. And as a result, it, it creates more things. So what happens is, what happened was, you have actually more input into your life, which helped to make you a better uh, recipient and a better leader and teacher yourself, right? So now if you've got a doctorate, you've got you've got master's degrees, you've got all these little, you know, you got all these papers hanging on the wall, but uh, it's, it's more than that. It was the relationships that formed these bonds in your life and probably the stories, the things that would happen through that stuff. You said even some, you know, some experts would come through and you have a chance to to, to, to rub shoulders with some people, it meant something different to you, and, and it was like uh, it was like crack when you get stuff like that. It's like, man, I gotta eat this stuff up, and you end up learning and make a big difference and impact the lives of other people. So you know that's kind of what you're talking about. So even though you have like a computer science degree, cybersecurity doctor, like who thinks like I'm gonna be one one day, mom, when I grow up, I want to be a cybersecurity doctor. Like yeah. said, how many people ever? <laughs> Right. So not maybe many, it's changed. it might change here in another five or 10 years. People might be saying that all the time. Um, but, you know, it's not that you're just become a, 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 a cybersecurity doc. It's that you've got so much things that you had poured into your life that culminates into who you are now. And you have a chance to just kind of pour that out into where you're at. Right. A absolutely. And this is why. I, so, you know, even as a professor, because um, I you know taught adjunct up until I started my, my MBA, uh, and haven't gone back to. I've got you know a couple other things that I'm I'm working on here. But I would tell my students, and I believe this very much so myself, which is why, you know, I, I don't outside of being introduced, I don't really care about the doctor title. I mean, because I already earned it. It's done. It's passed. What you're only I learned early on from from my father growing up playing baseball. Essentially, you're only as good as the next game you play. Hmm. Um, and then I, there was also there's this um, poem by Rudyard Kipling called If. And there's one part of this that I've been I've been reading this poem at least once a month for since I was in high school. And essentially it says this, you know, if you can treat triumph and disaster as the same two imposters. And so the way I took from that was it doesn't matter if I succeeded. It doesn't matter if I failed. Don't dwell on either of those for any longer than the moment and then move on. Um, especially 
if you succeed. Because if you let those successes go to your head, then you very well may um, fail because you now just believe you're infallible and you will not trust those people around you and those blind spots will become very prevalent. Right. Man, that's, yeah, that's so true. So good. And and so applicable to life, right? So those folks that are watching today, um, you know, we always try to to bring folks on here at Matt Chat Live that can share some diversity in the sense of what they're doing for life. You know, I've, I know several people that are in cybersecurity, so they're actually just doing cybersecurity. You know, it's it's one thing, but then to have some of the things you got in your background, um, which if there's folks out there that are wrestling with what they really want to do, I mean, now, now you're doing coaching, right? You're doing some coaching and stuff like that. So who would think after all that? You're going to do some coaching now on top of it, right? Well, you just never know. So it may be that things that you're doing in your life are just equipping you for what's getting ready to come and and you get to use it, right? So now you're working at a, at a bank somewhere with a cybersecurity degree and MBA and all this stuff. And, and you're talking about helping people out. I mean, it's fantastic stuff, right? So if folks want to reach you, I know we got uh, that title right there, Nostradamus, Daniel, you say it faster and better than I can, uh, which is your Twitter handle and on Clubhouse, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And you go to uh, Nostradamus.com, that could take you to uh, LinkedIn and or YouTube, right? You got your yeah, YouTube. you'll see my YouTube on there, um, which is, you know, uh, YouTube.com slash C slash Echelon Orchid, which you kind of see in the background here, you know, um, where I do my show work to kind of also learn, right? You know, the whole idea for that show is for me to journal my progression to whatever my next best version of myself will be. And I get to talk to some interesting people. Yeah, it's fun part of it, isn't it? You just said something that sounds like what your dad told you about about baseball, your next best game is what you just yeah. said about your your show. It's the same concept. Pretty cool right now that worked out. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so if folks want to get a hold of you, they can find you there or LinkedIn or YouTube, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay. And and your show again, the podcast is uh, Echelon Orchid. Echelon Orchid. And that's everywhere people can go to find it uh, their favorite podcast site, right? So yeah. It's easy to find now. Used to be back in the day, you'd have to say which one it was, iTunes oh, yeah. and this. And now it's just it's every, most, you know, it's everybody's got it everywhere, which is fantastic because now there's just no reason to say you can't find something. It's Absolutely. Really, it's very, very, <laughs> very accessible, right? Um, so so Dan, just imparting as we've had a chance to kind of talk through some things about life and then uh, education and, and kind of that journey and uh, being able to apply some of those things in your own life. And we talk about leadership today as well, which I think is a very important fact uh, to look at some of those things. You got to examine uh, styles of leadership. You were exposed to styles of leadership, which actually formed helping to form the, the leader that you are today as well. So for folks that are listening, we, we covered a hodgepodge of things, some eclectic areas in this show today. What's one thing that you really want to share with somebody to get through to their heart and head here for 2021 as they're moving forward? What's, what's one thing that might be burning in your heart to share with somebody else today? You know, I would say that the biggest thing, because we, we hear a, a lot of this all the time, which is, oh, I want to be a lifelong learner. And so I, I say that's the, the wrong goal. You should be w wish to be a lifelong teacher. And the reason for that is if you say you just want to learn things, you get the, the video, the audio, and you're writing it down, you know, you get, you know, according to the research, somewhere between like, you know, 65 to 70% retain it, uh, retainment of that data. But if you turn around, as soon as you learn that and you turn around and try and teach someone that the retainment goes up to 90%. Mm. So I think what we have lost as at least here in the United States, that desire to teach those people that were around, especially the generations that are coming, you know, after us on what it, what that means. And so we, we don't, we no longer want to teach. We want to rely on everyone else to teach them something. And we don't necessarily take that responsibility, you know, for all of us. And as leaders, it doesn't matter who it is. Our employees that work with us are actually, you know, and I would go so far as I'm teaching, you know, my boss, who's a, an amazing CEO on what leadership means also, because he has a different style than what I do. And, and they really do quite well. So I, I really hope people will, will change and become a lifelong teacher uh, and try to be better tomorrow than they were yesterday. Uh, incremental improvement. Um, I, I think that like what I, I was just talking with my, my 13 year old and I said, Hey, what would your 25 year old self 
what kind of advice would they give you today on what you need to do? And that's hard for a 13 year old to, to get to They're got, they've got to, they've got to really think, I mean, that's uh, the, all double their life. And what right. are they going? And, and I think I still look at, okay, what would my 65 year old self tell me? What advice would that person give me? My would I, say, you, you big dummy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, what were you thinking? Exactly. And, and I hope I always kind of feel that way. But that that's what I really hope people will, will strive for. Um, I, I, I make it mandatory for everyone in my organization. They have to do two hours of formalized training a week on the job. Like that is Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You've got to figure out how to do 25 minutes of training a day or two hours a week to become better. And I, I probably spend well more than that. Um, and I'll end it with this one last thing, Matt. They say that successful people have one thing that they do that they must accomplish every day to say they had a good day. That's like their minimum viable product for a good day. Well, I do two things because I want to be more than just successful. But for me, and I think everyone should should learn this, but but, you know, but make it to whatever it's about, about you and your audience. For me to have a good day, I had to learn something new and I had to teach someone something new. And mm -hmm. if I accomplished those two things, I had a good day. I yeah. want a great day, but that's my minimal for a good day. No, that's really great. And that really comes down to summing it all up is instead of being a consumer, we need to be more producers than consumers, right? And and the, the issue with, with COVID has been that we have we have bellied up to the buffet. It is, a, there's so much out there for people that are in our industries and podcast worlds and LinkedIn worlds and coaching, consulting, business, this, that, and the other, and self, you know, personal development and uh, mental health and blah, 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 right? It has been belly up to the buffet and we can consume till the cows come home. Mm, oh, I think you hear them coming now. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> what we have to do is learn that there's there's more value in being a producer than a consumer, right? So um, if you just always ate, this is kind of gross, but it's true. If you always ate and never excreted, you would die, yeah. right? You have, it has to come out, right? So what are we putting out there? <laughs> so it could be a bunch of crap or it could be really good. So it's, it just really comes down to how you do it, right? So it's so important to be producer versus consumer. Uh, you have to consume some, but when you just build up to the buffet, it's too much. And that's what you're talking about is just actually be more of a teacher than just a, a learner all the time. Absolutely. Fantastic news. Great news. Again, uh, one more time, Dan, if, if your, uh, your, your podcast again is the... Um, Echelon Orchid. Echelon uh, Orchid. You can find it on YouTube. The website is kind of there. You know, I've been kind of slacking, trying to figure out what I want to do there because, you know, my wife and I also started this distillery called Dragon's Mouth Distillery. It's really hers, um, you know, back there. Uh, but, you know, it's what we also decided to do during COVID. And this is something she's planning on doing full time, hopefully by the end of the year, um, for, you know, her gig. But we we decided to do a little bit of everything. <laughs> I want to be a taste tester. I'll tell you right now. I will, Absolutely. I will I'll let her know this is the real deal. I'll tell you what. <laughs> we want to get the, like the bite the dragon, buddy. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> well, it's, thanks uh, so much for being here with us today, absolutely. Dan. It's been, it's been good getting to know you, and I hope that folks you have a chance to get to know Dr. Dan here a little bit better. Again, on LinkedIn and or on uh, Twitter, you can see his handle right there. Or oh, sorry, not on LinkedIn, but on Twitter and Clubhouse. That's his, his handle right there. Or you can do that dot com and it goes to LinkedIn or uh, his um, YouTube channel as well. So you got all kinds of ways to meet him. Eventually, he'll get his stuff together and have a plain old website and just go there and click on it. You got all that stuff. It's in the works. It's in the works, right? Because he's more teaching than he is consuming. So you get it back to the website later. Anyway, it's been so good to have you today, my friend. Absolutely, Matt. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. And if there's anything I can ever do for you in the future, please don't, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, man. Well, let's talk about the stuff that your wife's cooking up back then. That might be the thing to do, right? <laughs> thanks again for coming in. Folks, thanks again for hanging out with us on another episode of Matt Chat Live, where business people are connected. Mm -hmm.